We are following developments at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. On Sunday, officials announced power was briefly restored. However, this morning, the Ukrainian Minister of Energy said power is off again at the facility. This is bringing renewed fears of a possible radiation leak. Russian forces took over Chernobyl on February 24th. The International Atomic Energy Agency has expressed alarm about the facility's safety. Alexander Daniel joins us now. He's the co-founder of the Center for National Resilience and Development. He also has a background in the Ukrainian government, working in finance and national security. Thanks so much for joining us, sir. So there has been a lot of unease around the treatment of Chernobyl by Russian forces. Uh, explain what the risk to Ukrainians' operational nuclear power plants is. Uh, and we all obviously understand what the potential risk could be if one of those facilities is damaged by Russian forces. But how integral are they to the infrastructure, the energy infrastructure of Ukraine? Well, first of all, let me um, update you. Uh, today, the power supply to Chernobyl station was lost again. It was destroyed by Russians. So, um, mm. you know, you said it's a, it was restored. It's again uh, not in place. So what are the risks? Uh, the Chernobyl station is not a risk for an energy. Because it's not a um, but um, there is a much bigger risk, Zaporozhye uh, nuclear station with uh, six nuclear reactions, six gigawatts. It's huge. It's uh, one and a half times bigger than Chernobyl when it was uh, operating. So that is uh, fully under control of Russia, and that represents an enormous risk. So, uh, and that represents the risk also for our energy uh, system, because it's around 25 percent of energy output uh, that was generated by this nuclear station. Now, almost all the reactors are shut down, and by this, uh, Russia is pretty much using it as a, as a, as a control tool over, over Ukraine, basically trying to destroy our energy infrastructure. But it also a huge risk um, uh, threat. Uh, it's a huge uh, safety threat because um, it's now occupied by Russians. And now imagine how it, difficult it will be to liberate the station because, you know, any attack, they would blame Ukrainians uh, on, uh, uh, on, for example, damaging the station. They can also blow it up. Um, so basically they have a nuclear bomb in their hands. With the Chernobyl station, it's, as I said, it's not operational for many years, mm -hmm. but there is a lot of nuclear waste there that, again, could be used if it's, if it's blown up, that the, the, the uh, nuclear waste, the nuclear like, uh, waste will, will cover, uh, you know, the whole Europe, like, as it was in 1986 mm -hmm. when the Chernobyl disaster happened. So this is a huge, enormous risk, not only for Ukraine, but the whole Europe. Alexander, when you talk about the enormous risk involved, can you also speak on just the concern that Vladimir Putin could use nuclear or chemical weapons in Ukraine? The White House has talked about this uh, more recently and, and said that there would be severe consequences. Look, I think he can. He can do it uh, as a way, the same way he can use uh, chemical weapons. Uh, so he pretty much, there is no difference in having uh, a huge nuclear station in the middle of Europe under Russian control on our territory and having a nuclear arsenal. You know, the button could be pressed, uh, you know, there and, and, and in Russia. So the consequences will be very similar. I think, but what is very important is Russia is, uh, Russia is uh, threatening everyone with escalation. And, and previously, you were saying, you know, there was a note that, you know, supplying of planes to Ukraine will be considered as an escalatory move by, by Russia. Uh, supplying regular weapons, also, they could view it as an act of aggression against Russia. Russia will be threatening everyone, all, all, all three world, and they know, they know that uh, um, West is actually very easy to get scared of these things. Mm -hmm. So the only reaction to this is act like Ukrainians. Don't get, get scared. I want to open you a secret. Russia will not have resources to fight with NATO. They don't have resources. They stuck in Ukraine. They could not progress in Ukraine. We're killing them. We're destroying them every minute. And while we're keeping the, this, um, you know, huge uh, army, I think NATO should not think about, you know, the escalation, not escalation, playing these games, but actually help Ukraine as much as possible. Not only with planes. There is no ore. Right? There is planes. We need anti-aircraft defense 
system, all three world needs to help us without any risk that Russia could, for example, retaliate to NATO. They have no means of doing this. So, uh, no, to, to finish the, 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 the Hitler of, of 21st century. So, Alexander, uh, um, as you point out, uh, Ukraine needs more of those military weapons. Uh, and one of the things that Ukrainians have called for is a no-fly zone uh, over Ukraine. Uh, President Biden has said that that is not an option on the table. There are some who believe that it should be. But the question would then become, so if there was to be a no-fly zone that was implemented uh, over Ukraine, that would not stop Russian troops, that wouldn't stop Russian tanks, wouldn't stop Russian mortar attacks. Uh, so. What would be next? What would be the next thing then if the no-fly zone didn't prevent cities from being flattened as we've seen over the last couple of weeks? We will stop Russia on the ground. What we cannot do is, um, is stop them uh, when they are uh, engaging against us missiles and aviation. Majority of the damage is done now by this, by, by, by using strategic aviation you know, tactical aviation and, and missiles. You know, the all airports being bombed for the last uh, several days. You know, the, the, the residential areas being bombed. It's all done from the planes. The ground forces, we will, we will halt, right? We know how to do it. Um, the other thing I think is also important is uh, support of China, potential support of China. If Russia will not join and help, uh, if, sorry, China will not help Russia, Russia is doomed to lose because their... Uh, uh, their economy, their production uh, is very outdated, corrupt, and uh, they will run out of the of power very, very soon. While we, as Ukraine, will be getting supply from United States, Great Britain, from all free world, like Soviet Union was getting during the Second World War. So we will get this, and Russia will be defeated by this. But unfortunately, that would be an enormous escalation on our ground that will be felt by everyone. Alexander, Danny, Luke, we thank you for your time. Of course, we will see what comes out of those peace talks later today in London.